Hey everybody, today uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about slide guitars and what, uh, what things that are related to the slide guitar in different versions of it. Okay, I get a lot of uh, questions from people and, and I'm always replying. Sometimes I'm repeating, you know, same stories. Uh, so I thought about doing this this video and explain it so every time you know somebody writes uh, I can just refer him or her to this video and we can go a little bit more more fluent not that I mind replying to anybody and I'm also really grateful that you write and you comment so now I'm going to talk about slide guitars okay slide guitars you know we have different types we have here um, I gather just a few acoustic instruments you can also play the slide with the electric guitar, okay, different types of electric guitars. And in the slide guitar world, we have two versions, what we call the bottleneck slide, which is basically this, okay, it comes originally from this. This is just a, uh, let me put this here on the, on the white background, so you can see it. It's, it's a, a bottleneck, list, okay. It's the neck of a bottle that used to be cut and you will put it on your finger and it's later on the guitar. Then you have other slides that, you know, don't have the shape of the bottle, but they are just like a, a tube, you know, a, a steel tube or different, different materials. All right. But mm, the way you usually play it is usually you will take the guitar, put the bottleneck on and just, you know, slide like that all right i think this is obvious for many people but just in case that anybody's watching and is a super complete beginner okay now uh, the other version that version that we have on slide guitars is a, what we call the lap steel guitar or the lap version or style which is when you actually put the guitar flat on your lap like this and you take the slide in this case it will it will change i will explain in a minute and you just play you know flat just like that all right a slide and two those are the two ways of playing a slide mainly sorry okay the standard slide guitar playing and then the lap steel type of thing all right um, on the lap steel also you have different types of guitars you know like you can do it on, on an acoustic like this resophonic guitars or dobros and you know just both are resophonic but anyway um, you also have the famous Weissenborn and you have the electric steel guitars then you have even the pedal steels who add certain things with the pedals and things like that but the foundation is, is very similar with the slide on the left hand and sliding flat okay so that's one thing about slide guitars. But now, next thing that when somebody starts learning how to play slide guitar, the, one of the big questions is the tunings. How do I tune my guitar? Uh, what tunes to choose? And this uh, it sometimes becomes quite overwhelming because especially if you come from the standard tuning on, on a non regular guitar you're like oh my god now i have retune now my notes are somewhere else i'm gonna have to relearn everything again and then oh sh shoot <laughs> there are other tunings too so it's like wow i don't know if i want to get into this look uh, first thing i would say about open tunings alternative alternative tunings you know whatever scordatura they call it in, in classical music you know uh, one thing you need to know it's like don't fear them. In reality, the standard tuning, the, the one that is a six to first a E, A, D, G, B, E, okay, the one they use in classical guitar or just normal guitar standard tuning, that's one of the most difficult tunings to learn the guitar on. It's very unnatural the way this, the, the notes are set up on the, on, on the guitar, okay? Whereas um, open tunings are very natural for the instrument. Um, this translates into um, making things much easier and much faster. For instance, if you take a normal guitarist and somebody that is learning guitar, even, even a, a total beginner, and you start teaching him with a standard tuning, it's going to take him quite a few days and lessons to get to play something. Okay? Whereas you take a guitarist, or a guitarist to be, that comes to the first class, first lesson and, and starts with an open tuning and most likely in just one lesson he's going to be playing something, he's going to be playing actual music, okay? Even learning a song, you know, without much effort, 
all right this is one of the advantages so uh, other advantages are that you know notes in the arrangements of the scales and the chords etc are more natural for the fingering and the way we move on the guitar uh, also the open tunings or also alternative tunings there are differences we can talk about that later um, uh, and they make the instrument ring better okay uh, the guitar, look, I mean, the, the standard tuning, the guitar sounds great, but still there are certain handicaps, certain gaps, okay? And, and when you play in certain keys or for certain compositions, the guitar doesn't sound like as it could sound, you know? So when you work on an open tuning, the guitar is really vibrating and resonating, okay? Harmonics pop up, are alive, and, you know, and, and the sound is, is way better okay also uh, for many reasons um, even nowadays you know uh, for instance class in classical music in classical guitar uh, finally uh, people is realizing that a lot of classical guitar pieces that we study or we play uh, when we use the standard tuning they are not completely in tune okay because it's basically almost impossible to have a standard tuning on a guitar with the frets on the same places and be completely in tune on any key okay we got to i won't get into all this because it has a lot of details but if you want to know about it you can just send me an email or a note and i gladly will do another video or replies directly to you okay but anyway so going back to open and alternative tunings these are the ones that we use most for slide playing okay you, we can play a slide guitar also on the standard tuning but it starts being more limited but then the question is what tuning to choose okay and the answer is let me explain you <laughs> it depends if you're gonna be playing the standard slide guitar or the lap style all right because certain tunings are better on one and the other well i should say certain tunings are better on the lap still you know like weissenborn dobros etc than the than the standard when you play on the standard let's take this one for instance you have a nice acoustic guitar with steel strings you know and you get and you any almost any open tuning is gonna be nice and and you're gonna be able to play a lot of things okay and um, the reason is because well no, not only because you can play the slide but also because when you play it on this position besides using the slide you have three extra fingers well even four if you use the thumb okay that helps you to put certain chords or you know to add notes and this is something you don't have when you play lap when you play lap you're holding the bar okay and you're just sliding the bar, you can slant it and move it, but you and usually the strings, if you see it here on the waist and bone, for instance, the strings, okay, are raised higher, okay, right there, you can see it, okay, so you don't have frets, so you cannot fret, even if you have fingers here behind the slide, you cannot use them to, to produce notes because there are no frets and the strings are really high okay so you're limited to only what you can the notes you can produce with your slide okay or the tone bar whatever you know like this or, or your open strings obviously all right so that makes certain tunings not so practical for for the lap steel okay so going back to the standard slide guitar let's take this one okay we have uh, many different tunings, okay, for both for the, both uh, types of slide guitars. Um, look, only in Hawaii, one of the the birthplaces of slide guitar, only in Hawaii on the on the on the good times of slide guitar or kikakila, all right. Almost every family used to have their own tuning. They used to have their own tuning. They would not even share it with other families. So imagine how many tunings okay now no panic once you when you learn open tunings and playing a slide or just without the slide but playing in open tunings you need to understand how this work because when you know just one and the foundation of it you're gonna be able to switch to different tunings very easily you're not gonna be lost you're not gonna be like hey, where are the notes where are the notes now no they will be still there and you will recognize them and see them and know them without really memorizing again or practicing okay but you need to understand how things work okay so we have let's start with the two basic families of tunings that we have 
the most popular we have like the G open tuning okay for instance this guitar is on G open tuning what we call G open tuning low bass because in the bass the low notes are, are, are lower so we have D G D G B D this is G low bass later we're gonna see another version that is high bass G high bass we use it on the dobros for 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 bluegrass and country okay okay but low bass this is the G low bass where you see another that is called the A open tuning which is exactly the same but just one step higher it will be E A E um, A C sharp E okay so it's basically the same arrangement but just one step higher okay and now this this is one of the open tunings and this is one of the great foundations uh, tunings especially for the lap style playing okay more in a minute okay um then you have another tuning okay or another family of tunings that are the ones of the e open tuning or d open tuning like this guitar is on d open tuning so it's d a d f sharp a D or the E open tuning will be exactly the same but one step higher you know like the G half A on top one step higher you on D you can also have E now how do you choose for instance if we, we are on D open tuning and E open tuning you know the same family how to choose one or the other well there are many things for instance the key if you're a singer or if you're playing for a singer usually singers they have more limited things you know because they cannot reach all the notes so you might choose one or the other that is lower or higher in order to help you know for the voice to get there okay also the sound of your instrument if you like it better you know this a little bit lower and it's kind of sounds a little fuller you know and E is very vibrant because it's higher and, and has more energy in a way but also uh, there is one little trick that is important to know and according to the guitar you use or the strings you use okay one thing for instance if uh, the D open tuning has less tension than the E open tuning so if you have a guitar that is you know like an economic guitar or an old guitar and you're not sure you don't want to put a lot of tension on the guitar you know so you don't break anything you want to go for the low tension uh, tunings you know like D in the case of D and E tunings, we use the D. In the case of G and A tunings, we'll use the G tuning. Okay, those have less tension because they are lower. Okay, so that is in, if you're taking care of your guitar and you have to be careful. Okay, but in general, if you have a normal, healthy guitar, uh, you can use any of. Okay, so things that are going to happen when you play a slide, also you want to choose well the gauge of your strings because if your strings are very thin, uh, especially when you play bottom leg style you're gonna find that when you're trying to play the slide you see you're gonna make this noise of the slide against the frets because the string doesn't doesn't have enough resistance so it digs in and you hit the frets with the slide okay now when you have a thicker gauge of strings you're gonna have more resistance more tension and you're gonna be very comfortable playing the slide and the sound is also great you know it produces a, 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 a thicker sound just to put it away okay that's one thing but you might say okay but if I put a, a heavier gauge of strings it's gonna be more uncomfortable when I'm playing without the slide because I have to really press and it gets it's harder you know to press and so it's more uncomfortable you know well what you can do is have like a medium or, or light gauge okay but when you go to play a slide you use the open tunings that have more tension okay in the case of D and E you choose the E or in the case of G and A you use the A because they are higher pitch they need to you need to put more tension on the strings so the strings are going to be tighter and you're going to have that resistance that is going to keep you know the slide on the string more comfortably okay so that's another point that you want to keep in mind when you're working with with the slide guitars you know and there is never an absolute of what to do what gauge what not gauge you know it all depends on the music you play who you play with uh, what guitar you're using you know uh, the gauge of the strings all the things i'm explaining you know they can be a little confusing and overwhelming at the beginning but if you just go slow, slowly and step by step 
uh, through them, they are not that difficult, you will understand them right away, they make sense, and you can make your choices as you go along, okay? Um, so that will be on strings, gates, etc. Let's go back to the tunings, okay? Um, let me explain you why, and starting with the basic tunings, um, moving from one tuning to another is not that difficult. Well, we already saw that between tunings like D and E, uh, there, are, there is no difficulty because it's exactly the same arrangement on the strings, but one step higher or lower. Okay, on the E tuning, we have starting on the six strings, uh, we have the root, the fifth, the root, the third, the fifth, and the root. Okay, translated to E, E, B, E, G sharp, B, E. Well, I'm on D here, so you're hearing one step lower, but anyway. Okay, on D, the same arrangement, one, five, one, three, five, one, will be D, A, D, F sharp, A, D. If you're not understanding these numbers, uh, what I'm calling is the intervals of the notes. You take the root E, and then you count five. E, F, G, A, B, that's a five, okay? And the three will be E, F, G sharp, okay? So, that will be the arrangement of this tuning, okay? And on the G and D open tuning, the arrangement is the fifth, the root, the fifth, the root, the third, and the fifth. Okay? So on G, a low bass will be D, G, D, G, B, D. You might want to stop the video for a second and think about it or write it down and, and really understand what I'm saying. Okay? Um, so this is what happened. Imagine for a moment that you have a guitar with seven strings, okay? Put like this, seven strings, your guitar. So imagine you have a guitar with six strings and you add one string, which is gonna be a lower string. So when you're playing in tunings like G or A, what you're doing is you're taking off the first string and you're playing with these remaining six strings, okay? When you're playing with the E and D open tuning, you're taking off the very lowest string you added at the beginning and you're adding the first string that we just took off all right and you have your six strings so what have, what does this mean seven strings so we take this off in 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 for the e or the open tuning and we take this off okay for the um <laughs> i'm getting lost here <laughs> for for the d uh, for the g and a open tuning okay so this means that we have right here five strings in common for both different families of open tunings. Are you following me? Otherwise, rewind, write down what I'm saying about the, the, the names of the notes of the open tunings, all right? And the numbers of the intervals. And you will see it. If you put it one on top of the other, you see, okay? So they're basically the same, okay? So that's what, it, uh, that's what I meant when I said it's not difficult to switch from open, some open tunings to others, you know. In, in some families, it happens like I just explained you. In other families uh, are what I'm telling you, you know, that is exactly the same thing, but one step higher or two steps higher or two steps lower, whatever, you know. So those two things are going to happen. And that's on the foundation of the open tunings. Later, you're going to find a fancier open tunings you know, where you have a 13th, a 9th, an 11th, like what we call tensions or color notes, okay? That's basically the basic open tuning that we start to working on, like the ones I mentioned till now, but we just change one string to give that color. So still, you're not really getting that loss, you know, and you're gaining a lot of nice colors, you know? And when you're playing, you know, uh, country music and you want to give your dobro or your steel guitar like a more like swing, type of sound, you know, but you might want to go to a 13 type of, 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 of tuning, all right? I won't get into too many details. I'm already getting into <laughs> a lot of them, you know, so I hope you're following. Otherwise, just watch it slowly and make some pauses. Remember that in, in all my books and publications uh, that I have on, on my website about a slide guitar, either lap steel or standard uh, slide guitar, you're gonna find all these explanations of tunings and, and stuff. So you see it there too with even more detail and that will help you understand it, okay? So so this, in the, this is the foundation about tunings that you need to understand, okay? So you want to move to other things. Uh, I mean, you want to move freely and don't be worried about what tuning you choose or not. Eventually, every 
decent slide guitar player knows how to play in, in several tunings without effort. Okay, so now um, if you're starting to learn guitar, slide guitar, and you want to start with lap style, like a ways and more, or a dobro, or even a national play flat, mm, the recommendation is to start with the G low bass open tuning. Okay, or the A, which is same family one step higher. All right, because uh, of one thing, um, when when you're working on this tuning, it means that the arrangements of your notes gives you the third, the second, and the first string having the root, the third, the major third, and the fifth of the chord, like this. Okay. Okay. So these arrangements of having three strings together and having the root, the third, oh, and the fifth of the chord gives you a, in, in the key of playing lap style. Okay, you, if you master these three strings, the first three strings on a G open tuning, you're gonna you're gonna be able to play lots of things, lots of styles, and any different open tunings. Okay, because it's this arrangement that gives you the different formulas to play all the different chords, etc. The melodies, the arpeggios, etc. Okay, so um, so that's why when you play lap style, you're gonna start by this tuning, G open tuning or A open tuning. All right. Um, the the lower strings are doing a different function. They are make a playing bass lines, etc., or completing the chord. I'm not gonna get into that right now, but like I said, most important the first three strings. That's where you're gonna be most of the time. And even though you do other things on the other strings, eh, that's important. Here I have to make like a little um, how can I say it? Call it a little uh, a little pause. And before continuing. We're gonna go to the case of the dobro. If you play bluegrass, you know, the dobro has what we call the G open tuning high bass, which means you don't have D, G, D, G, B, D. You have from the sixth string G, B, D, and then again G, B, D on the third, second, and first. Okay, the dobro is an instrument that, a slide guitar that has. A, a very melodic function on, on the music that it plays. Even though it can, it plays chords and, and makes rhythms and accompaniments many times. It, it plays a lot of licks, a lot of melodies, a lot of stuff. Okay, so this arrangement is perfect for the style. Okay, and as you say, as you see, if you come from the G low bass open tuning, the only thing you're doing is is just doubling the first three strings. Remember the first three strings that I mentioned, one, three, five are the most important. So if you master those when you go to a dobro or bluegrass, you could just gonna have three strings and the three on the bottom are the same. Just one octave lower, you know. You know, all these kind of things. So that's one just one quick variation on a special case for the dobro in bluegrass that we're gonna use this, this tuning. I played a lot of bluegrass using the G low bass open tuning and it worked just fine. But traditionally, uh, what they use is the G open tuning. All right. If you're starting, uh, if you don't want to get confused and get too many things, stick to the G uh, low bass open tuning and learn different things and master that. Okay, which, like I said, with the right information and understanding everything, it's gonna take you no time. But if you don't learn in that way, in an organized way, and understanding what you're doing, then it's gonna take you way longer. Not that you cannot learn, but it's just gonna take you longer and you're gonna have some frustrations along the way. But anyway, that would be my advice on that. So, going back to tunings, I was speaking about playing lap style, and suddenly you say, uh, well, uh, you recommend to play lap style with the G low bass open tuning, but then I see a lot of guys these days playing way some more guitar, for instance, with the D open tuning. And um, so I'm going to explain you about this because this is something a lot of people are asking about and, and, and writing me questions about. You got to understand that um, you can play lap style on a D or E open tuning from that family, okay? Um, but it's very limited. It's very limited because you don't have on the first top strings, on the third, second, and first, you don't have the arrangements of the root, third, and fifth of the chord that I explained earlier. So a lot of the combinations with the bar 
are going to be very difficult. Yes, you do have it on the fourth, third and second string, but still, then you have the first string, which is something else, and you're going to have to be worrying about muting the string and all kinds of things, so it makes it more difficult, okay? But what happens um, nowadays, well, for quite a few years, is that a lot of people, they come from playing standard guitar on the standard tuning, okay? And then they go and they want to try the slide guitar, just the standard slide guitar. So what happened? The, for instance, the E open tuning is one that looks the closest to the standard guitar tuning because the first two strings are B and E, like the standard open tuning. Even the sixth string is the same. Okay, so what happened? On those two strings, on those two strings, we can play a lot of melodies. So right away, we can start sounding good. We don't get lost because we know where the notes are because we're used to those two strings on our standard tuning. Okay, so it's a very natural transition from playing standard guitar on the standard tuning to putting the slide and starting playing on an open tuning, okay? And like I said, it's an open tuning that because you have fingers available, you can do a lot of things. So you can get far as long as you're staying, you know, on this position. The moment you go lap still is when things change, okay? So many people, they go from the standard to the bottom neck standard with the E open tuning or D open tuning, okay? And then they go flat, they go lap, okay? And they keep the same tuning because hey they already know it and they know where things are and i'm using the slide but it 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 looks like the only difference is putting the guitar flat so what the heck i can i i'm already a lapis steel player you know for that matter yeah but no okay because here you your your tuning is gonna give you a lot of limitations like I said, you don't have all that game. Let me just change the slide by here. Let me get this one. You don't have all that game on the first three strings because your tuning is not a, a very a, a very good tuning for lap steel playing. Okay, so this is why people get confused. You know, when they start learning lap steel guitar, Weissenborn, etc., and they're like, "Oh, I see everybody playing on D open tuning." Or oh, should I start on this? Or why I see a lot of lap steel guitar books? based on the G open tuning, okay? So now you know why, okay? Eventually, you can play on both tunings, both ways, you know, a, the standard slide guitar or the lap style, okay? Um, so it's not a problem, but like I said, when you're trying to build a foundation, if it's lap style, the G open tuning will be much better. That's clear already, okay? Um, what other things I wanted to say? Um, pa, 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 pa. Let me see. There's so many things I don't want to forget. Um, well, um, slides, you have many different kinds, okay? You know, I'll show you the bottlenecks at the beginning, okay? When we're playing like this with the bottleneck, you also have the metal ones. Here's one I want to uh, call the attention to, okay? This is like we call a, a tone bar or bullet. Okay, that we use a lot for, for lap style play, like this, okay? And now what happened with this? Mm, this is really good for lap steel, it creates a great sound. But there is one thing, this is gonna happen especially to a lot of beginners. As a beginner, you might not have a, you might not have a lap steel guitar, okay? Or a slide guitar, a proper slide guitar dedicated to that style. And you might want just to take your, your normal acoustic guitar you know, and, and pop up the, your open tuning and start playing. Well, they usually just go from the standard to the open tuning and then put the bottleneck and... Okay, whatever, <laughs> getting off it. So, um, but the moment you go lap style, suddenly you realize, oh yeah, but the lap steel guitars, the strings are raised higher, so you use the tone bar, like the one I show you. So, uh, I need one of those guitars or whatever. Well, no, traditionally, the lap steel guitar started being a normal acoustic guitar. They used to use like what they call a nut racer, just like a little V-shaped piece that they would put here on the nut to raise the strings. But here's a one trick or something I would like to share with you. I want to call it that way. Um, and it's like, you can find these tone bars 
made of a different material of the standard ones. These are steel, okay? These are very heavy and have a lot of mass, so that helps with the sound. But mm, the good things about this type, these are more like ceramic, I think, is the material you would call it in English, okay? Um, the tone is not as fat and big as these ones. It's just different, okay? But it still is really good. But here's what I really like. With this, they are so light, okay, that even when you play lap style on a normal guitar that where the strings are not raised, it's very comfortable and you still can play, you know? Okay, you still can play without having a lot of problems when you, when you try it on a normal guitar like this. To play with this bar, it's so heavy. You see? It's just gonna dig on the strings a lot, and because the strings are not raised like on a, on a lap style guitar, okay, it's gonna be very uncomfortable. You're gonna get a lot of noises, and 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 it's gonna be hard, okay. I'm saying this especially for beginners because they don't have different guitars. They begin and they just take the normal acoustic guitar and they try different things. So if you want to pursue the lap steel playing, try to get one of these tone bars, ceramic ones, light ones, so you can still do it like that. Okay, and later if you get a lap steel or whatever, a dobro, you can just switch to the steel bar and you might improve your sound. Okay, or you might want to continue with that one. It's all right, but that's just a piece of advice that I think it can help. Also for professional players or like advanced players, you know, many times like I go traveling and I want to, I only carry my acoustic guitar and I want to be able to play different things. So... The moment I want to play lap steel, I don't have my lap steel guitar, my wasting board. I just pull this bar and I can do it on my normal guitar, you know, because it's comfortable enough. Okay, so this is, this is a plus that always helps. Another thing I would like to mention, and by the way, uh, I want to mention here, I also have some free videos on the YouTube called, I think they were called eight tips. Eight tips for slide playing or lap steel playing. Okay, and there I'm talking a lot more detail on the bars, how to choose the bars or the slides that you use, picks, finger picks, things like that. Okay, so you can check those up and they'll have a lot of free information for you that are gonna help you. Either if you're a beginner or you are intermediate or advanced, I mean, you, you will be surprised. Um, and also obviously on my educational material that is available on my website, you will have even even more details. If you thought you were hearing a lot of details here, just wait. I mean, uh, really, I mean, I sincerely recommend you any of my books or, or, or educational videos and stuff, and, and you'll get even more details, which I think are gonna help you a lot, okay? So, one more question that everybody makes. Playing with finger picks versus playing without them, okay? As usual, and as it happens on the guitar many times, um, it, there is nothing right or wrong. It's just different. Playing with fingers are gonna produce a different, you're gonna get a different tone on your guitar than playing with finger picks. That to start with. Okay, I'm the first one who plays in many different ways and depending on what the music is asking for, I use one or the other, okay? Um, but now, it is true that to play certain styles or certain things or in the style of certain artists, you might want to use what they were using. For instance, um, the late uh, Bob Brosman, okay? Very acclaimed uh, steel guitar player, okay? He always used finger picks. And there are a lot of things that he was doing, you know, on the guitar that you're gonna need the, the, um, the finger picks. Okay, to just to get that tone, to get that pounce, even to be able to grab, to, to plug the string properly for certain techniques, you won't be able to do them without the finger picks. For certain things, like I said, you can play without finger picks and you do other things, but certain things are not available. The same way that certain colors are not available if you're using finger picks. Okay, you, it's, uh, with uh, the finger picks, you can play more with the skin and get like a darker tone for certain things, which is something that you're more limited when you're using finger picks. Okay, so it's not a matter of should I use them, should I not use them? No, I mean, just learn and then see what the music is asking for. 
Now, one thing is that many people, when they try to learn how to use the finger picks, they get really frustrated and they tend to think that the problem is the finger picks, that they feel artificial or whatever, or things like that. No, most likely, and what happens to many people is that they don't have a proper right hand picking technique, okay? So when they put the finger picks on, uh, their compensations and bad habits and mistakes on how they move the fingers uh, tend to be magnified. So it makes the whole experience more frustrating, more difficult to learn, okay? For that, for instance, I recommend you have uh, uh, some work I published, uh, I think it was called The Guitarist Hands, if I'm correct, okay? It's some uh, educational videos about the guitarist's hands, right and left, for um, any style, any guitar, explains so many different things about biomechanics of the hand, and, and, and neurology of how we train when we play guitar and things like that that are really helpful you know knowing how your knuckles should be etc and these kind of things if, if you're not especially if you're a, a self-taught guitarist or even people who has been to music conservatories etc it's, it's very helpful you're gonna discover a lot of things that uh, are really gonna change your game you know and make you learn faster better more effortlessly and save a lot of time and frustrations so I, I sincerely highly recommend you that okay and this takes me to another thing that I wanted to mention when it comes to slide guitar playing many players uh, even myself when I started we suffer of a lot of having a, a lot of gaps in our education on how to use the slide you know from something as basic of how you hold the slide either the tone bar or the bottleneck, you know, uh, from how we pick, etc. Okay, and this is important, okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because, like I said, it makes you advance faster. Uh, the slide guitar is relatively easy because once you start, you know, getting the hang of it, you can move around thanks to the open tunings, you can move around very easily and sound good. But as you try to get into an intermediate level, and not even to mention advanced you start you know suffering because of those gaps and most people don't realize okay uh, for instance many people uh, when they write me they are, one of their questions is okay i see you have all these methods and different levels what do you recommend me many times even if the person is telling me he's an intermediate player or even an advanced i still recommend him to go through my beginner methods okay not that i'm trying to sell more or stuff like that it's all right you know but uh, the, the, the question is that, like I said, many people have all these gaps, okay? They can play quite well, but they have certain things that are very key and they don't realize that they didn't learn right or they didn't, didn't learn a lot at the beginning stage. And they don't see the, the consequences of this until they are at an intermediate level, okay? And this is why I always recommend, you know, going through, through the, the, my beginning uh, my works, educational works for beginners, because I tend to give a lot of uh, details on this, you know. So, I mean, it's up to you and you can check it out and, and like I said, you'll see the difference. Um, I think this is mainly it, you know. Uh, many things I wanted to mention and probably I'm missing some of them, but oh well, I'll try to um, make up for that in future videos, etc. Um, yeah so anyway thanks so much for watching and keep checking out you know my channels and website etc because you're gonna get a lot of these educational videos even just music videos for you to see different things played in different guitars and different styles and so i think you if you're enjoying this video you're you will like all the rest too so bye now